Welcome back to the High Level Masterclass. This is the first bonus module. We're going to cover the logo and the brand guide. This module will help you create the logo for your business if you don't already have one. We briefly covered in a previous module how to quickly create a very simple logo using Canva. In addition to that method, I will also be showing you the best ways to create a logo, and these will include free versions as well as paid versions. In addition to various ways to do it yourself, and to get it done for you. In addition to creating the logo, we are also going to create what is called a brand guide. This brand guide will contain all of your brand colors and any fonts that you have that you want to use for your brand. This way you can stay consistent and organized across your entire business. So not only will this help you create a website and all the pages associated with it, but if you plan on making any documents, any videos, any slideshows like this, you can make the colors and the fonts consistent throughout so everything is cohesive and professional. And this will save you a lot of time as you build things out. Like I mentioned, if you're building all these different aspects for your business. You want them to be branded for your business. And having this brand guide easily accessible will save you a lot of time from having to go back, see exactly what colors you use, what the hex code is, what the font is called. This will help you out a ton. So let's create a logo. So there are a few ways to create a logo with and without AI. The easiest way to get a logo created with the best possible quality is to get it created for you. Whether it's someone you know, or if you just wanna find someone quick online using Fiverr and Upwork. I have a link to Fiverr that you can use down below. Now, arguably the quickest way to get a logo created is by using AI, specifically Dolly 3 and Firefly. And the cheapest way to get it done is by doing it yourself using Canva and or Adobe Express. There are free ways to use Dolly and Firefly, but with generative AI, you usually have to take some time to get the right piece of art. And both Dolly 3 and Firefly have a limited usage if you're using the free versions. Just keep that in mind. The logo for my company, Eternium, I actually used Firefly to create the concept for me. And then I took that concept, put it into Photoshop, and got a very simple, clean version. And then messed with the coloring and got me this end result. I absolutely love this logo. It looks like a logo for a billion dollar company, which is suitable for Eternium. So that is proof alone that AI is a tool, not a replacement. Before Eternium, my agency was called Rise Rebel, and this was the logo that I used. It was just a copy and paste with very few edits in Photoshop of a Dolly 3 image that I got within ChatGPT. And though at the time I really liked the logo, it wasn't clean enough, it was too busy, the proportions were kind of weird, and it just looked very AI generated. It was a very lazy logo. So you want to keep your logo very simple and very clean. So let's go into method one. It goes without saying that you should probably have at least a very general idea of what you want your logo to look like in your mind before you actually go on to design it. If not, it's all right. You can probably get away with doing something super simple. But with this first method, we're just going to use Canva. So go to canva.com. You can just go to logo right here, it's going to open up a new document. And so right away, we have a few different templates that we can use. So you can pick a template and modify it, or you can go over to the elements and search for something that closely resembles what you're looking for. But honestly, if you were just getting started, using a text style logo will be one of the better options. So if we go back to design, even something simple like this, just do example, kind of move this over. Even, even something simple and kind of stupid like this, that is not bad. And there are a ton of different templates you can use. This one's like this. This one's pretty cool. This font's actually pretty nice. There are a ton of different ways you can go about doing this. A textile logo is the easiest way to go about it. And you can even go generic too. Scrap that and then just start from scratch. Go example. Then just change the font. So even something like that. Example.com. Example.ai. If you're going with a text style logo, obviously the font is going to be the most important aspect. So definitely take some time, find a font that you like and that actually speaks to the brand name. And then you can get a little fancy with it. You can play with the coloring, do something, something like that. In fact, I probably go the opposite. So even something like that kind of gives like a GameStop feel. You can even play with the effects. You can hollow it out, play with the thickness. 
do an outline, add a shadow. Don't overthink it. Just make it just make it clean, make it simple, and then just make it cohesive to your brand. And do not worry, you can always change it down the road. It's not the end of the world. So the next method is by using AI. You can use ChatGPT. If you have a ChatGPT subscription, you can generate images with Chat B with ChatGPT. There are actually a few pre-trained GPTs that you, that you can use that are specifically trained on creating logos. I've used those in the past. They're pretty decent, but for me, I just, I'm an Adobe fanboy. I love Adobe and Firefly is definitely better in my opinion when it comes to image generation. It's a lot more versatile. So let's start with a prompt. The prompt is going to be the most important aspect. So do something along the lines of simple logo design, white, background so something like simple logo design white background and then whatever it is that you have in your mind so for me for this example let's do the letter y letter y with an e above it let's generate that and these are nowhere near what i have in my mind which is very typical for the first generation and when it comes to generative ai art Another thing though, too, if you have any images that you want to reference or mimic the style of, you can add those in here. So the structure will take the basic structure of the image. So if you draw something out, like a rough sketch, you can feed that in the structure and then it will use that to create different versions of it. And you can play with the strength to dictate how much that reference image affects the generations. Then the styles is just that. You can give it an image to mimic the style. Then you can use the gallery to browse different styles if you don't want to upload your own. But for me, I'm just going to keep generating, see what we get. Now, this is kind of nice. A cool trick, too, is by clicking this little pencil, you can use this as a structure reference or even a style reference. So if there's something that's kind of close to what you're looking for, you can feed that back to it to get different versions that are similar. And then just keep doing that, and that will bring you closer and closer to what you have in mind. So I've added this as the style reference. Then we can play with the visual intensity and the strength. I'm just going to leave it as is and just keep generating. All right, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to assume this is exactly what I want because this actually doesn't look too bad. So what you want to do is obviously you want to download it. And then depending on how much you like it, if this is exactly what you were looking for in your mind and you just want to use it, you can just use it as is. But let's say you don't like the colors and you don't like these lines. So we can actually modify those. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use Photopia or Photop, whatever it's called. I call it Photopia. Photopia.com. And then it's literally Photoshop without a lot of the fancy stuff like the AI generation, at least as far as I'm concerned at the moment. So if we can just drag that file in here. So you can use Photopia instead of Photoshop. It's completely free. You don't have to buy anything to use it. But for me, I'm going to use Photoshop because I have Photoshop, I pay for Photoshop. And it's quicker because I can just select subject and then it's going to select this. So just select the subject, select the actual meat of your logo, and then I'm going to cut this and then paste it and then just get rid of the background here, bam. So now we have the logo itself, there's no background. It's perfect. So what we want to do now so from here, what we need to do is add an adjustment layer. So make sure we have this selected right down here. Just click that and then go to this little thing here, <laughs> this little icon here, and then go to hue and saturation. So from here, you can turn the lightness and darkness all the way up or all the way down. So the reason you want to do this is a few reasons. It never hurts to have a black and or a white version of your logo. But this will help us out if we want to add a slight gradient, which we will do. So I'm going to make this completely black, just like that. But then you'll notice you may have some imperfections in your logo like I do here. So I'm going to clean these up real quick. Just going to use the brush tool. Zoom in a lot. Make sure I get the color. And I'm just going to hold shift, click, and then shift to where I want the point to go. Just like that. Just clean it up. Just like that. And then this right here. This is actually, let's do this. Then we'll just clean that up. Go to the eraser tool. Whoa, that is huge. So we'll scale that down. And then 
just hold shift click and then shift right here just make sure that's a nice straight line doesn't have to be perfect we have another imperfection up here go back to the brush tool click and click just like that and then just do that if you have any imperfections that's really the only tools you need eraser eraser and brush tool so that is clean so now what we can do i'm going to split my logo up in two parts because i want this piece of the logo to be a different color than the other piece i'm going to select all of this right here boom and then i'm going to cut it then i'm just going to repaste it and then that'll separate the two layers there all right and the next thing we're going to do is add a effect so i'm going to click on this piece here go to effects and then we're just going to go to gradient overlay so now let's double click into the layer that we want to add color to then we're going to go to color overlay then i'm just going to drag the adjustment layer down and then I actually want this to be like a gradient yellow. So I'm going to go back into the style, go to gradient overlay. I'm going to turn off the color overlay. Then I have this gradient here. I'm going to use that. So with this gradient, let's change it up a little bit. Let's change this color to blue and then this color to like a dark blue. Something like that. It looks, this looks terrible in my opinion, but it's what I want. So once I have this, going to export, quick export as PNG, and then it is saved. Then lastly, too, if you want some text in addition to your logo, you can click the text tool, click there, and then just add your motto, your slogan, or your company name. So I'm going to do why, because why would you want a logo like this? Change the color, we'll do black, just like that. That looks terrible, which is exactly what I want. Cool. Then I'll just export this one as well. So that is how you create a high quality logo using AI. And although this method is solid, you still have to be artistic about it, at least somewhat, or else you get something like this compared to this. So now that we have our logo, let's talk about creating the brand guide. The brand guide format looks something like this. This is the one that I used and actually have hanging up on my wall right behind my monitor for Rise Rebel before I rebranded it to Eternium. So you can see here, I have eight different colors in little squares with the correlated hex codes. So as I'm building stuff out, I can just look right here behind my monitor and see all of the colors and their associated hex codes. So I can literally just plug those into whatever I'm working on in addition to the two fonts that I have and use for this brand. Obviously this has since changed due to my rebrand, but the concept is the same. You want to have the two fonts or three fonts, however many fonts you use for your brand, you can even use just one font like I do for Eternium. But the key is to have everything that you use right here on this guide. So not only if you can use it, but if you have a client or if you have someone doing work for you, if you're going to hire someone to do some work for you for your business, you can send them a copy of this to have everything that they need to implement your branding on whatever it is that they're creating for you. So common practice, you want to have at least two colors for your brand. You want a primary and a secondary color. And then if you have no idea what colors you want, you can use resources like the hex color picker to just kind of find colors that you like. But if you followed along with the logo creation process that we that we just went through, you should hopefully have colors on your logo, which you can look at in the file to see which hex colors those are and use those in your brand guide. Or if not, you can get those hex codes from an existing image. You can just upload your logo to the hex code color picker and get those hex codes directly from your image. I'll have a link to that for you. And then now that we have all of that, all we need to do is create a document in Canva or Adobe Express or even Google Sheets. Just add your hex colors and text using the fonts of your choice. So back in Canva, let's just go to doc, I'm gonna open up a document. And then I like to do centered text here, and then sample logo brand guide, just like that. Then we just upload an image. Then we drag that image on here, make it a little smaller, just like that, not too bad. All right, so now that we have our logo added, all we need to do 
is add the colors and the fonts. So I'm going to do the colors first. So we're just going to click this little plus button, go over to design. And then here we're just going to design the little chart thingy. So we'll use a square. You can just search up square right here, then just do this. And now we'll go. So I'm, I'm going to do, I think I have four, four colors in mine. Before I do that, let's add a little body of text underneath and then just do hex hex code just like that and then we're just going to duplicate these bam duplicate boom and duplicate bang and then center them so now now we just grab those hex colors so i still have my photoshop open so i'm going to go into here i can't remember going to grab these so the gradient so this color so the hex code is right here triple f triple zero just copy that paste that then also go into here, click this color, add a color, and then paste that code here, just like that. And then just repeat that for all the colors of the gradient. So what I'm going to use is for this orange piece. So go there, click that, copy this, go in here, paste that, click this, click that, and then go in here, paste. So just repeat that as many times as you need. Make sure you have all the colors here. And now once you have all the colors there, you can rename this X colors or something, whatever you want. We'll save that. Whoa. So now we have our hex colors. Then now we just need our fonts. So font, font one, then font number two. Now Futura is actually one of my favorite fonts next to Monsteret. So let's see if we have Monsteret on here. And there we go. My two favorite fonts. Boom. So we can actually do... Futura, just in case, so we don't need to know the actual names. Monsteret. And just like that, we have an entire brand guide. So across anything we create, we have the colors, we have the fonts. So you can just save this, go to share, go to download, and save it as a PDF, and save it as a PDF. You can print it out. I would definitely recommend you print this out, paste it somewhere where you can look at it and you will be in very good shape. Thank me later. All right, now it's time to review. Keep the logo clean and simple. Do not overcomplicate it. If you want it done for free, you have to do it yourself. And remember, AI, AI is a tool, not a replacement. Do not make the same mistake myself, as well as many others have made in the past, by letting AI do all of the heavy lifting without you adding your human element to it, your human touch, or else you'll end up with a shit logo like Rise Rebel. Terrible. And remember, the brand guide is for your convenience. As you build stuff out, you will be referencing it more than you know. You want your brand consistency throughout everything, across all platforms. Your websites, your social media posts, your slideshows, your documents, everything. And again, print it out for maximum convenience and paste it on the wall behind your computer or somewhere where you can see it regularly. Ideally, when you're working, that will make the most sense. And that is everything you need to know about creating a logo with AI and creating a brand guide. So hopefully you found this module helpful because now you can create logos for anything. It is just another service you can sell to other people, another tool in your tool belt. So I will see you guys in the next module.